We, of course, want to get a trader's view on all of this. Uh, Bill Brook is the president of Blue Line Futures. He's at the CME Group in Chicago. It's been a tough one to figure out, especially when the market has been doing so well. They continually say that trade and political news is background noise. Do you see that holding true through a September that can sometimes be really rough for the markets? You know, it has not been a tough one to figure out for us at Blue Line. We've been extremely bullish up until today. And we've had a target in the S&P of 29.24. Really, our rhetoric has been, as you said, a lot of this background noise. And if you look at some of this, some of the stuff with trade, it's really kept the Federal Reserve from moving faster on hiking rates. It's slowed inflation, arguably, as well. So all of that has helped bring a supportive hand to the markets. And then, again, a lot of this noise doesn't mean you're going out and selling some of the top stocks. But this is right here, right now, where you ask yourself if you're a long-term investor or if you're a trader. And if you're a long-term investor, not worried about the next 3 to 5%, then you, you sit back and let this thing go. But as a trader, that's what we do here uh, at Blue Line. You know, we exuded caution heading into the weekend after our target to the upside was hit. But not only that, there is some uncertainty here with trade. We have called the Chinese uh, negotiations the next 200 a billion dollars to be implemented on China to be the official start of the trade war. And it worries us heading into September 5th with as the picture becomes a little murkier than it was, say, a week ago. Yeah, and that's such a good point, because when you talk to companies and you see the anecdotal evidence, trade has been hurting them a little bit, not much, but they continually say that that next phase in of tariffs is what is going to hurt them. Um, in terms of consolidation, though, at these levels, you know, some people are also saying that even with all this uncertainty, yes, take money off the table, but you still could be looking out because so many people around the world, really, given Fed rates and given the economy here in the United States, have nowhere to put their money. And that's why they're absolutely piling it in to U.S. equities. Do you think that will end? No, U.S. is the best place to have your money right now, whether it's real estate, whether it's equity markets. You know, there, it's the safest place right now, considering especially what you're seeing in the emerging markets and, and uncertainty all around the world that could, could come of trade. U.S. is the safest spot. But, but ultimately, too, it's because the Federal Reserve is in the driver's seat and they're doing a wonderful job. You know, they're taking this slow, gradual pace of raising rates and it's not scaring the market. And, and they've priced in two more hikes this year. They've priced in three essentially next year. And the fact that inflation is not running away, that's what Fed Chair Powell has reiterated. The, the market finds that as a calming factor. And, and again, we think the market overall, the S&P is what we follow most closely, is heading higher. And arguably, where a lot of people are calling this a nine-year bull market, there's a way to look at it as this is really just breaking out for almost two years. And this is the beginning of a new, fresh bull market. Yeah, I mean, some people told me even last week that they definitely saw this as a breakout moment. Having said that, you're saying you're more cautious. When you say you're more cautious, you're more cautious just over the short term, medium term, long term. I mean, what are you cautious about? Just the next few weeks? Very short term. You know, what we do at Blue Line, we work with leveraged futures in the S&P. We work with clients uh, on a daily basis. We ask ourselves, where is that next 1% to 3%? We have been as, as bullish as we possibly could over the past couple of weeks. And our target, again, to the upside, 29.24, it came as close as you can get with, with testing it. And then you look at the picture here over the next couple of sessions going into the middle part of next week. It, again, as I said, it, it's a little more murkier. And you want to take a step back and you want to ask yourself, do you need to be in leveraged futures right now long? Now, I have a spot I'm looking at in the S&P a little bit lower, 28.73, 28.75. Again, that's in the futures contract. We would get long again at that point. Uh, and, and as the, uh, the picture clears up a bit as we, as we head into next Wednesday. Bill, I like you. You're direct and to the point and are completely transparent. You're not dancing around anything. I like that. <laughs> and I think our viewers got a lot out of that as well. Have a great weekend. Really appreciate it. Thank you.